Hello, welcome back. Around the world, Christians are marking Holy Week and the run-up to Easter, one of the most important dates in their calendar. For Christians in Syria, the country where they believe St Paul found his faith, it's also an anxious time as the country's war drags on into a fourth year. Our chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette, reports from Damascus. For serious Christians, the start of Holy Week is a time to hold fast to rituals. Especially such joyous occasions in the saddest of times. Memories to treasure for young and old. After years of crisis, we hold the olive branch high, exclaims the patriarch, waving a symbol of peace. But there's no escaping reminders of war. A visiting peace delegation takes up the front pews of the church. They've come from countries as diverse as Iran and Pakistan, Britain and Australia. Peace activist Mairead Maguire is among them. The only way forward for Syria, for as in Northern Ireland, is through dialogue, through negotiation. But there's no peace now, just daily violence. A mortar round struck a Christian school this week, just a few hundred meters from the church. 60 children and teachers were injured. Nine-year-old Hiba waits for surgery on her leg. She tells me it's broken and burning. You're a brave girl, I say. Yes, we are brave, but what does it mean? All the children were injured. A lot of blood spilled on the floor in our courtyard. And our principal, Maya, she's in surgery now. A lot of teachers were injured. Hiba and her classmates were playing in their schoolyard in the Christian quarter of the old city when a mortar landed. Dozens now strike Damascus every day, believed to be fired by rebels. The Syrian army pounds their positions on the edges of this city. In Syria now, attacks take place on a daily basis. Some are targeted, some like this are indiscriminate. Syrian Christians tell us they're not the only ones suffering in this brutal war. But for them, the pain over their individual losses is deepened by their anxiety over the fate of their entire community. This week, St. Paul's Church in Damascus was full of sorrow for Father Franz, a Dutch Jesuit priest murdered in the city of Homs. A towering figure who inspired Syrians of all faiths by his courage and commitment to this country. Another leading Jesuit was kidnapped by Islamists last year. Two bishops are also in captivity. I'm afraid about the future of the Christian community. I mean, if they, the majority of Christians, if they had that possibility to get out of Syria and to be asylums in elsewhere, they would leave, 90%, I would say. On the other hand, some people who made the decision to stay. For Christians, Holy Week marks the death and resurrection of Jesus. Now they also pray for the revival of their country and their place within it. Lise Doucette, BBC News, Damascus. Let's talk now to John Pontifex uh, of Aid to the Church in Need, a charity which helps persecuted or oppressed Christians around the world. When you think about Syria as being the, the real sort of last bastion of Christianity in the Middle East, why the persecution now? Who, who is targeting these Christians? Well, it's difficult to say precisely who is behind it, but what we can say is that there are these Al-Qaeda-type movement, ISIS and others, who are determined, it would seem, to take out Christianity from Syria. Don't forget, Syria is the place where Christians first got the name Christian. It's a very important center. And we ourselves at Aid of the Church in Need have seen all sorts of reports in which Christians have been specifically targeted. And I remember one instance where, of course, we met families who were forced out of Syria and we were told uh, that how they had been asked 
to leave, otherwise they will be killed like their Christ. So it's a really specific targeting for instance that but, can but, happen. But is this purely religious or is it also about acquiring land and property that perhaps these Christians held? I think it's both. To get to the bottom of the motives of those behind these attacks is of course difficult at, at this distance, but it is clear that they seek to eliminate Christians from places like Aleppo where these Al-Qaeda militants are so strong. And only yesterday we had a report from Petro Gagoris in Damascus saying, look, who is listening to, to us Christians who are being intimidated and being forced out? Those are his words. So it's very strong. A Dutch priest was killed recently. Others have been kidnapped as well. The population, I think, of Christians in Syria is just over a million. How many remain there now? And, and what are you doing to try and bolster and support the Christian, Christian groups there? Well, what we understand is that at least uh, a third of the Christians have now been either displaced from their homes or forced abroad. And this creates a huge, huge humanitarian crisis and a, indeed a pastoral crisis. And as a charity, we've been helping that priest you mentioned, Father Franz, getting aid into that sector of Homs where he was helping those 80 or so families, people who were trapped in that old city. We've also been helping uh, Petrarch Gregorius with families from, uh, from Balula who were forced to Damascus and provide help for them. One sort of remembers what happened in Iraq and the, the Christian community there as well. I suppose it's worth pointing out that in Syria itself, it doesn't appear as if the Christians have any sort of power aims or, you know, it's not as if they are, are trying to uh, achieve any sort of position in Syrian society, but that makes them even more essential perhaps in, in the whole peace process in the end. Yes, we've been, had it explained to us again and again that Christians have this vital role as bridge builders. This is why it's so important, not just for Christians, but the wider community, that Christians are unable to stay because they are that bridge, they're that linkage between these disparate communities who are all the time fragmenting. So it's desperately sad that we're seeing in our own time a replay of what happened with, in Iraq with Christians gradually being forced out. And we just have to hope and pray, and it's the right time to do it in this Holy Week, uh, that there will indeed be an end to this violence, just as the Patriarch has asked. All right, John Pontifex, from uh, aid to the church. Thank you very much indeed for coming in.